before this, it, uh, we were discussing about level payments, right? Now it's varying payments. So, so basically, loan can be paid in any payment schedule technically. But so it's mostly com- it's more common that it is paid on a level payment. For example, there's a lot of loans right now that is flexi loans. Flexi loans means if you have more money, you put more. If you have less money, well, you have a minimum payment lah. But if you have more money, you can put more. <coughs> However, um, if we are dealing with varying loan payments, we we won't have the convenient formulas like we we have um for level payments. So to get the um amortization schedule, we need to depend on this formula only where we depend on the adjacent information, adjacent, the previous uh, payment information. Okay, varying series of payment. Um, sometimes payment that is less than the interest due result in negative amortization. What do I mean by this? For example, in this case, this, the outstanding balance is um, 10,000. So, the interest rate is... 10%. So because it's 10%, the interest due in the first year is 1000, right? But the payment that they pay is 600 only, less than the interest due. Okay? No. Because of that, principal repaid is negative. So this is negative amortization. It means that instead of your outstanding balance reducing, now outstanding balance increase to cover up for the interest due that is not paid yet. So that this is called negative amortization. A loan is being repaid by a series of non-level payments. So I is 10%. The teeth payment, RT is 2000 And the principal paid from this payment is 1000 so from this you know that i t is equals to a thousand also okay the next payment is three thousand and you need to find p t plus one okay if you know the relationship remember uh, earlier i hope you remember this it, it will be so simple to calculate this one plus i plus RT plus 1 minus RT. So, we know we don't we need to find PT plus 1. Now, but we need this. PT, yes, we, we have PT. 1 plus I, we have 1 plus I. RT plus 1, we have RT plus 1. And RT, we have RT. So, we have all of the information. So, we can easily come calculate this. So, PT plus 1 is equals to 1,000 times 1.1.1 1. 1. times 1.1 1. 1 plus RT plus 1 is 3000 minus uh, RT 2000 so you get 2100 okay so that is um the most efficient way to do this another way to do this is you need to find um, because we need pt plus one if we can find i t plus one so if we can find i t plus one you can easily do uh, 3000 minus i t plus one equals to pt plus one right so how do we calculate it plus one before we calculate it plus one we need bt so once we get bt we can calculate it plus one and then from there we can calculate pt plus one so how do we calculate bt we can use this relationship b is equals to bt minus one minus pt okay but we don't know what is bt minus one it's not given so we need to derive so another thing that we know is um, i t is equals to b t minus one times i so we know i t is a thousand 
BT minus 1 is something that we want to find. 5%. At eh, 10%. I is 10%. So, BT minus 1 is equals to 1,000 divided by 10%, which is 10,000. Okay. Now, now that we know this 10,000, we can put it inside here. So, BT is equal to 10,000 minus 9 PT. PT is 1,000. So, BT is equal to 9,000. Alright. So, now we know BT, right? 9,000. Then, we can easily find IT plus 1. So, it's 9,000 times I, which is 900. So, now that we know IT plus 1 is 900, PT plus 1 is simply 3,000 minus 900, which is 2,100. So, we got the answer again, 2,100. Right, next. Okay, another um, common question in FM at least is where... Um, your loan is paid by equal principal repayments mm, and then when principal payments is level how will the monthly payments be or yeah how will the regular payments be so I hope you answered increasing why because um, regular uh, regular payments Or RT is simply PT plus IT, right? PT is flat. So all of our payments, our PT is uh, constant. But our IT is decreasing. So our IT starts big and then as the principal is paid off, the interest due will get smaller and smaller. So this makes the um this makes the as as the it gets smaller and smaller the rt becomes smaller and smaller because this one is fixed this one is a smaller and smaller number so your rt decrease oh sorry The regular payments will will decrease. Uh, my bad. So it's decrease. Okay. Exercise. A loan of a ten thousand is being repaid over ten years by equal principal payments plus interest on unpaid balance at effective rate I. If the total interest paid in the third to the eighth year inclusive is two five four one, determine I. Okay. So this one. The, the the clue is total interest paid. So the total interest interest paid is as follows huh? from the third to the eighth year. You can you can draw this and so that you can see. Yeah, but basically this is the outstanding balance, huh? This is time. This is outstanding balance. So outstanding balance would be uh ten thousand at time zero. 9,000 at time 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, until 10. 8K, 7K, 6K, 5K, 0K. Alright, so um, it says the total interest paid in the 3rd to the 8th. So the 3rd to the 8th. So this is the outstanding balance, but the interest paid IT is going to be for this for the first year the interest paid is 10k times I 9k times I 8k times I da, 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 da. here is 1k times I okay so it says from the third to the eighth so it's between 8k till 3 k times I so this is, so you have to uh, uh, identify that these are the equation for the total interest paid. So, 
if you do arithmetic progression then you can solve for i okay but the main important thing that you have to identify for this type of questions is you have to make sure you can draw this timeline where one timeline is for the outstanding balance one timeline is for the interest paid and maybe one one timeline for the rt i guess yeah all right final balloon payment final payment okay for a level payment usually the payment is not a nice round number okay so like previous example i give you um i um the loan amount is 709 but the the uh, payment is 200 but usually it's not common that your loan amount is looks uh, like that 709 it will usually be a nice round number so because your loan amount is a, a nice round number your your loan payment won't, won't be a nice round number but if let's see if let's say you want to convert your your payment amount your rt to to have a nice round number you can but then you have to adjust fin final payment so accordingly so there's two way to adjust your final payment a final payment larger than the regular amount this is called balloon payment balloon is larger than it and a final payment that is smaller than the regular payment amount so this is called a drop payment okay so to calculate the last payment first you need to determine the outstanding balance after the last level regular payment and then allow for interest earned between the second last and the last payment okay let's see how it goes okay allow an example a loan is ten thousand dollars is to be repaid at five percent effective by payment of a thousand at the end of each year until the loan is repaid. So if you wanna pay um this loan with five percent interest rate with a thousand at the end of each year, so you will need fourteen point two to um, fourteen point two uh payments to pay off this ten thousand loan. So option number one, you pay off uh, this with using a larger than regular reg larger than regular payment. So your your final payment is larger than the regular a thousand ringgit. So and then you pay at time fourteen. So the fourteenth payment is uh, a balloon payment. So to do this, you need to find your outstanding balance at time fourteen. So this one, I calculate the outstanding balance using the retrospective method. So by using the retrospective method, this is the the value two hundred ringgit two hundred dollars. So the payment at time fourteen basically is a thousand the the regular payment amount plus this two hundred point six eight that is outstanding. So your payment at time 14 is a balloon payment of 1200.68 option two we use a drop payment so drop payment means you pay at time 15 and the time 15 you just pay the remaining balance so at time 14 you still pay a thousand like usual but at time 15 you will do balance at time 14 times a fourteen fifteen, so it's two hundred point six eight times one point oh five. So, so you will pay two hundred plus, two hundred plus, uh, for the last payment, which is at time fifteen. So that is called the drop payment. Okay. 